morning, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome all of you to the Skills Future Month in collaboration with Smart Nation 2021, organized by Skills Future Singapore and Smart Nation Singapore. Our speaker, Rajesh, will be sharing the topic, how to use augmented reality AR for marketing. Throughout the session, please feel free to post your questions in the Q&A tab that you see on the right panel. Do take note, questions will be moderated. Rajesh, please go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Morning, all. Um, uh, thank you. It's a really uh, good uh, week to start with uh, on the webinar on augmented reality for marketing. Uh, about myself. Um, uh, Okay. Um, I'm Rajesh, you can call me Raj or Rajesh, uh, which is comfortable for you. Uh, coming from a creative tech background, um, I've been a developer, uh, I'll say AR VR developer and educator. Um, I, I'll say a lifelong learner now, to be frank, of course, because the technology is moving fast, so I keep myself as a lifelong learner okay, and learning futuristic. Okay. Um, been in this creative tech field for the last 18 years, uh, moved from uh, computer science to games to AR, VR development, now getting into um, data and AI, okay. Uh, so, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm going more into the side of where, uh, how technology can be an enabler, okay. Uh, that's how I envision myself uh, going forward now. Um, so moving forward, um, um, so that's about myself. Feel free to ask questions. Um, I have two monitors just in case if I see on the other side, I can see what my Q&A session um, is all about. Um, so what I have done is, um, I know it's it's a long three hours. So what I've done is it's, I'm going to uh, shift my uh, sessions into three. Uh, three sessions. Uh, it's basically session one, um, session two, and session three. Okay. Um, basically, uh, I kept it in such a way that even a normal person can understand um, what AR is all about and where it can be applied. Okay, so the first session is more about um, introducing AR, the types of AR that we have, and more into the app-based AR. Something that I will define what app-based AR are. Some case studies that I we have done. Uh, since we have not done, we cannot show some of the studio uh, projects. We have uh, more show, uh, showing more on the prototype side of it. Okay, um, so you will see some case studies on the prototypes. Okay, and then I will break for Q and A so that any questions with regards to the first session, uh, with regards to app based AR, or anything with regards to uh, the introduction of AR or where it goes across, feel free to ask. Okay, the session two is more towards uh, the web based AR. Okay. That's, we are seeing some trends that's moving on the direction. So apart from getting AR into the app, we'll also be doing understanding how AR can be developed on the web-based AR side of it, okay? Um, again, um, some case studies or prototypes that we have done across. And uh, Q&A after that. Um, session three, uh, getting into the social side of AR, okay? So what we I have planned across is apart from defining AR, we have uh, app-based, we have social uh, web-based AR, and the third session we're going into social AR, okay? And what is social AR? Um, lens and filters, okay? And the most important stuff uh, 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 part is what's the KPI, okay? What's the ROI and how, at the end of the day, it's return of investment, okay? So how will I, uh, how will we, uh, invest in this uh, technology and what will be the return of investment that we can get if we invest, if we are going in that direction, okay? And last, it's more on the AR quiz, okay? Um, something that uh, I, we and NQC have worked on to just to uh, uh, engage the uh, audience now. Uh, and then we leave it as a Q&A session, open-ended Q&A session. Uh, and as I said, uh, the webinar is less technical. So do not ask for, oh, which again, I, I'll definitely, I am a technical person. I'm, I'm definitely able to answer you any questions with regards to the technical side of it. But since it's going to be more on the uh, general thing, so I kept it less technical. Uh, the aim for me is to keep, the, uh, share the knowledge of AR, where it can be used, where it is getting used to a wider audience, okay? And I'm still open for any technical questions in case you have, and I'll be able to share my uh, thoughts uh, on the questions, okay? So this is our agenda. 
session one, session two, and session three. Each has a Q and A. Feel free to ask or post questions uh, on each end of the sessions. Okay. Um, so before I start, okay, I always wanted this uh, thing about uh, rise of AR. Okay. So one of the things that's happening with AR is people tend to uh, first focus is okay, uh, uh, let's know about AR, and first thing they do is okay, let's go cool, start learning some tools, Unity, Vaporia, yeah, and all those kind of things. Okay. But end of the day, AR is kind of a technology. Okay. So first thing that you have to ask yourself is like, uh, before you define AR, okay, ask yourself why why you are here. Okay. There will be a business person, there will be a student, there will be a adult learner, there will be a person who understands, can I employ AR in, in, in that, but in, in his field that he has in, okay? So these are what we call it as the aha moment, what we, what we say it as, why you are here, okay? There is a reason why people are kind of uh, very eager to know about the technology, like AR, VR, and XR, and mixed reality, and AI, data science, because they, they see the value that's getting into it, but at the same time, we also want to know how these kind of technologies can be uh, uh, pushed into their uh, business or into their career or into some kind of a product that they want to develop. Okay. Uh, so we, what we are going to start with, uh, how will AR change the future of marketing? And that's, that's, that's like a single line word that we want to push across. Okay. And in that whole question, there is one specific uh, word that people have to emphasize on, it's technology. Okay, um, technology has always been evolved from five years, 10 years, 20 years back and how it has evolved a lot in the last 20 to 30 years, okay? So the first thing that we are asking ourselves is evolution of technology, okay? Um, and specifically to the AI side of it. The first question that people ask is, is it uh, a fire? Is it going to stay or is it going to go away, okay? And what is the tech model for it? And what is the business model for it? And why we are talking about these kind of technologies for two reasons, okay? Uh, uh, so first step is whenever technology comes across, there are two types of people always pushed across, okay? And, and why I'm talking about technology, we ask me, of course, this is an AR um, webinar and why I'm talking about technology. There's one reason, just give me a couple of minutes and I'll tell you why I started with this introduction about technology, okay? Um, there are two technologies. Technology that is inspirational, okay? I, I still believe when I, five, six years back, when I when people started knowing about AR and VR, people say, wow, it's very interesting, okay? I have to buy this Oculus gadget for $1,000 and really very interesting to go. Inspiring, okay? Um, but it's it's innovative. Um, we at that time, we asked ourselves, like, is it a marketing product? How many people know about this uh, technology, AR, VR, six years back, seven years back, okay? It's very hard for us to go and educate a client or educate even a student to say that this is what the future is going to look like. For us, it was also a learning curve. So the first thing that people ask is, and first type that we are trying to look for is technology that is inspiration. You look at AI, you look at machine learning, you look at data science, you look at AR, you look at VR, Everything that looks at six, seven years back, this, that is a journey that started, okay? And that people are pushed across and say, okay, let's try pushing into this technology. It's inspired. Do some examples, like, wow, look at this example kind of thing, okay? That's type one. And the second type, technology that is functional, okay? So what happens is there are technologies that is uh, inspirational. Some things will die down, will not, Look, go into the market side itself. But there are a few technologies that will take from type one, most of type two that is functional. Okay, that means if you are, it is actually solving some things in real life. And that is very important. Okay, that means when people say, I want to learn AR or I want to use VR kind of a thing, ask yourself is like, is it a functional technology? That means, is it trying to solve a particular problem? And that is very important because Trust me, there are n number of tools that is available. The whole question is, but can we create a solution that is function and that we can solve a problem, okay? And it is highly market. And the, the type of technology that people are trying to do is, it's, it's highly marketable. Everybody knows it, okay? You don't have to, just like your smartphones, okay? We just pick up the phone and just uh, chat, WhatsApp, text, anything we want, okay? It's not that you specifically have to do a specific activity kind of thing. 
So that are the two things, fundamental things that you have to look for. Technology that is um, uh, inspirational, technology that is functional, okay? And as we are talking about this technology, there is this new buzzword that's coming up across, or it's actually going across as the experience economy, okay? And at least right now in this current generation, the experience economy evolves rapidly, okay? And it's more about hyper-personalization, about me, about you, and how do you engage that particular customer or the audience or the user, we will say, okay? So when we start defining this type one technology or type two technology, people always notice into this new uh, experience zone that we were talking about, hyper-personalization and engagement, okay? When you look at Facebook, when you look at Google or any other things, that is what is happening everything will be revolving around that particular one single user. It is all about how do you make your customer feel? Okay, and why I talked about economic experiences before we start defining AR, you look at what happened with Google search engine, okay? By default, when I want to go search, I know there are different uh, engines people use, but I put a, a very generic example, kind of a Google. It's like a norm, if I want to go search something, I type in Google. Google.com or my browser is open, Chrome browser is open, I go and search. So without me knowing myself, I'm using a technology. Okay, that's very important. And why it is important? Because it's like a habit for me. So I don't have, nobody has to tell me what needs to be done. I just use the technology whenever I want it. And I will get an answer from that one. So that's what same thing happened with Netflix. What Netflix did, it broke the barrier of the normal theaters and say that, let me bring a, uh, uh, movies back to your home. There are many other things. I'm just putting some few examples. Same thing with Amazon. Okay. And what did Amazon do? Moving from brick and mortar pro, uh, stores to more into the shopping side of it. Okay. But at that particular thing, at, at what we are right now, there is something called the uh, Facebook and Instagram. I think 50, 60% of the people use Facebook and Instagram. And there is this small component called AR kind of subtly embedded right inside it, okay? And it is, at this point of time, it's the pinnacle of the personal experience, okay? And of as of internet today. So when we start defining it, you have to all talk about this type one technology, type two technology, what is this econo experience economy looks like, okay? And that's very important, okay? And that's where, I, the people, at least from the, our uh, side, we, when we do our own research on any of these technologies, we, we always look into this fine and film experience model, okay? And, 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 and it is very relevant this days because most of uh, our uh, thing is pushed on, can I go and uh, uh, start learning a course or can I go start online, type in a Udemy course and let's start learning AI? That doesn't work like that. You will learn the tools, but end of the day, when you want to start creating a solution, when you start creating a solution, this thing, this four pillars has to be mapped to your solution or experience. Entertainment. How entertaining is your experience? If you use Snapchat, if you use uh, Facebook, if you use Instagram, and you, you can see the entertainment that you get. People on your selfie and you can have those different uh, uh, filters that is applied to your face. Education. If you have bought a product in IKEA and you can go and say, boss, can I go buy a furniture in using IKEA app? Okay, can I use AR for that one? Or can I use a, a textbook? Okay, can I bring a, a specific chapter to life? Education, are you educating something? Third is aesthetics, okay? Will I look nice consuming it? Okay, it's a very important uh, way of pushing across. And the fourth is escapism, okay, that means I mean, moving away from reality, I forget myself. Okay, and that's the whole idea of this fine and well more uh, experience model. Okay, and why experience economy is relevant today's task is because we are moving into this particular technology. And, and that's where technology acceptance model is very relevant today. Ease of use. And when, I, when we start creating, and we will revisit this technology acceptance model at my last slide. Why? Because when we start creating, a, when we start looking at a technology, the important thing is the ease of use. Is it easy of, can anybody use it? You don't have to go educate a people. I know how difficult for, uh, because I also teach AI class. 
when uh, when i go and say boss can you open your phone i can i tap on to this uh, you have to install the apk how do i install the apk is the first question they ask so, so the question is it should be very easy to use it should not be need that i need to be a tech person for it utility does the user stand to gain from it why because when i create a solution in the ar and it is very relevant is like what is the experience or what is the uh, customer gain from that or the user gain from it uh, and the third is perceived social currency if you are a creator or a designer and i'm creating some filters in ar and ar kind of thing will the user get to win more acceptance and credentials from this experience is also relevant okay so these are the technology acceptance model that people talk about and when we start looking at this last slide before i go into the ai side of this this is how the journey is okay there is a discovery okay there is concentration there is engagement there is acceptance okay when we look at when we start looking at ar and vr we are at between engagement and acceptance okay we have discovered that who discovers either can be as individual person or the big tech have to open this new thing okay everything every time you go to a apple developers conference or a facebook developer conference or some other developer conference the big tech guys will come up with some very interesting um, gadget and say okay this is the solution this bit wow the discovery side of it when you start consideration and then we'll start to use those kind of uh, uh, applications uh, or those kind of uh, solutions inside consideration that's my friends engagement um, and when we start engaging with the user or a customer okay and the last is acceptance and acceptance is like what i talked about google what i talked about netflix what i talked about uh, uh, amazon acceptance is the technology makes it mainstream it becomes a habit so you don't have to teach anyone how to do it they know how to do it that's how it is okay and this is very very, very relevant when you start getting into the ar now understand the technology because kind of not deviated i want to set the context right is because i don't want the webinar to be more on what is ar kind of thing yes obviously there's a whole webinars on ar but understand where we are moving moving from there's a technology type 1 type 2 and there's technology acceptance model where people tend to accept this technology okay so now let's go dive into why we are here augmented reality okay um so before we uh, go into the uh, uh, ar side of it okay um so basically the augmented reality can be uh, first thing when i because when i teach the first thing ask my uh, learners is like what's ar okay and first thing they say is what does it come into your mind okay people always relate to pokemon go okay they don't know what it does but it was fun it was engaging and they started going and hunt characters and they used to collect points okay it's a typical augmented reality uh, uh, game and it is a mass market nobody taught anything it it became like a habit people used to go to marina bay sands people used to go to um, other things and it was a very interesting way of how people started um, uh, understanding how ar is pokemon go okay and and for that and in a very layman terms of defining what ar is is ar is nothing but you have uh, information augmented in your real world okay and that is important okay in a layman terms what definition is you have a real world and you have this characters or information augmented onto this a uh, real world it can be using your phone it can be using your devices but right now we are focusing more on the phone that means i have a phone i'll be able to see my ar, AR because i using my camera i open my camera i see my real world and i can augment some information onto it that's augmented reality okay so when you start talking about augmented reality there are three basic elements that we should be able to um, fundamentals i'll say i'm just going back to fundamentals first is information second is trackers or sensors third is medium okay it's it, uh, i've just put it in a very uh, easy way to understand information trackers or the medium these are the three things when i say information when i talked about defining here what i told us you have a phone you're augmenting information into a three, uh, into a real world what is this information consists of it consists of components like objects 
videos, images, animations. In short, it's some kind of a data that can be superimposed onto real. That's information. So when I say what AR is, AR has got three elements to it. First is information. You can drop in any information or superimpose any information into the real world. Objects, videos, images, and animation. And you can also not only uh, drop the information, you can also interact with that information. So you have a product that you have augmented into the real world and you want to start interacting with it, you can also do it. So that's information, okay? Now, the second type. So there are trackers and sensors, okay? So how, does, how do we see that information, okay? What is the connection between the physical world and the virtual world? Okay, there are a lot of ways you can um, um, get that connection. Okay, in a simple uh, layman words, when I start doing AR and I say, okay, how do, how do I see that in virtual information? Okay, and how is the bridge getting connected? There are multiple ways. I'm just listing out the few a, a, a easy ways and I'll describe uh, later also after the slide. Uh, one is uh, image recognition. In second, in layman terms, we call it as marker-based AR. Second type, we call it as markerless AR. Mar marker-based AR means I'll define what marker-based is in the next slide, but these are the couple of types that we have. Marker-based, you look at an uh, image, it augments that information. You look at a ground surface, no marker, it augments that information. Typical Pokemon where Pokemon Go type. They look at your face, like how you use in Facebook or Instagram filter, it tracks your face. There is location. So you go to a specific location, you want to augment, you can do it. So there are different trackers that is available that allows you to bridge the gap between the physical world and the virtual world. Okay. So we talked about information. We talked about trackers and sensors in layman terms the way we bridge the connection between physical world and the virtual world. So as we are starting this, let me, uh, before I go and open up the third element, let me stick to this second element more into detail, the information element that I was just talking about. Marker-based AR, or we call it as image recognition. That means when I want to augment something, okay, and uh, we define what augment reality is, augmenting information into real world, okay? And first way you can augment this information is the first one, we call it as marker-based AR. So what's marker-based uh, AR is? Um, when the camera sees a particular marker that you can define, it can be a custom marker or it can be a marker for your business, you augment some information. Okay, information can be an object, it can be an animation. So it can have any, information that you want when it sees the marker. It can be as, as simple as your business card, okay? And that is what it is, okay? And you can augment that information using a smartphone, okay? Or you can using a web also. So both are possible using marker-based AR. So understand what marker-based AR is, augmenting information into real world, but using a particular image. The second type people talk about is markerless AR. What's markerless AR? I know the best example I gave you was Pokemon Go. But in a layman terms, I'll tell you, markerless AR is basically where you're augmenting information on a, in a very layman terms, a non-reflective surface. Because long the surface is not reflective or, uh, and it can, the, your phone can detect the ground surface, you're able to augment that information. That's your second type. That's a markerless AR. That means when I'm having sitting on my table and can I augment a small character right on top of it? Yes, you can do it, okay? And this markerless AR, uh, the only uh, um, uh, thing that with markerless AR is there are very specific phones. I think 60 or 70% of the phones now support markerless AR technology. Um, good thing with markerless AR is it can be supported both by app and web. You've seen examples as I, as I go across, okay? So the second is markerless AR. So we saw marker-based, we saw markerless. The last type, just for the sake of fun, we call it as location-based AR, okay? 
that means you can specify a latitude and longitude and you will be driving draw um, right into that place and you can augment the information that means the user has to be in that place that you have um, you have uh, programmed in case it won't uh, and then when the user goes to that particular location you are augmenting some information that's location based here very typical of code, how the Pokemon Go works across, okay? So these are the three different types. When I start talking about um, uh, information and trackers, this is coming in the trackers and how these are the three things that bridge. There are a lot more, but I'm just putting the three things that is there in this one. The, the guys that bridge between the virtual world and the physical world, okay? Now, as we are um, talking about, and I before I start, um, um, looking at the case studies, okay? There are a few uh, very important things, just summarizing um, the magic behind AR, GPS coordinates. Um, this is, again, uh, we can use web, we can use app uh, and use location-based to augment a certain information. Second type, we saw based on what we have shown before us, image markers. Um, we use the mobile device to locate predefined images and augment that information, okay? Um, and this is replacement of QR codes. We call it as a black and white markers. Okay, and third is uh, facial recognition. They look at your face, you can track your face and with filters, you go from there, okay? And the last that uh, is my markerless here, but the, the tech behind that space is called SLAM. Okay, and why I'm talking about this is because when you, uh, uh, when you type in uh, uh, AR supported devices in Google, they'll list, give you a list of phones that supports the device, okay? And the, the concept behind this is there's this thing called SLAM, simultaneous location and mapping, okay? So it, it basically what happens is I don't have a marker, it's fine. All it needs is it understands the surroundings around you uh, and then, um, we can um, augment the surface, okay? Uh, QR code is a marker-based AR, okay? Just for the question that we asked. So why is a QR code as a marker-based is, I still have to look at the QR code to augment that information. There are two ways we can answer the question. One is QR code, I scan, augment the information. The second type is QR code, I can install the application inside it. Both are possible. So at this point, I'm going as a marker based. I can look at the QR code and I can still document that information. Okay, so we saw uh, information uh, and uh, we saw trackers. The last technology element that you should ask is medium. Okay, where is this getting, uh, where it can be uh, deployed in a very technical terms I'll tell you. That means, I identified, okay, boss, I want to augment the uh, yeah, water bottle. So I can do marker based, I can do markerless. Identify both, okay? I know what my 3D object is. Medium, where you want to deploy it? Should it be on your phone? Should it be on your uh, uh, browser? Or should it be on a social media platform? Or does it have to be on a separate device like HoloLens? or other AR devices that's coming up. So the question comes is, you pick the medium fair, it is going to be deployed. But when you start making this um, questions, information, what information? Assume it's a water bottle, marker-based, markerless. Assuming it's a markerless. Then ask whether it's going to be browser, app, or headsets that's coming up. There are new heads, AR headsets that's coming up. Which direction shall we go across? So these are the three technology elements that we should be always looking at when we start uh, understanding this, okay? Um, information, trackers, and medium, okay? Three technology elements, okay? When we start understanding this, what AR is, okay? What are the types of AR? People ask. Three fundamental types. I know that I can cover a lot, but since lack of time, I'm just covering only three basic things. Uh, one is, app-based AR. Uh, app-based AR is basically where your AR is downloaded to your smartphone. Simple as it is, okay? In order for the experience to happen, you have to download it. How can I download it? 
two options i can go to the play store or an app store download the application and enjoy the experience or i can go for a qr code ask the user to install it manually in their phone and i can do it so these are the two things app based ar so first thing is app based ar install on the phone the second time web based ar that means i don't need to download anything all i have to do is go to the browser just type in www.m1234 whatever the domain name that you purchase just deploy it in that one that means the user types in the web uh, portal and the experience starts so that's for web based ar that means we are not downloading any of the apps every app resides on the server okay the third type that we will we will be seeing is social ar that means i don't want to download in a phone i'm so lazy to open a browser to type but i like social media space that means can i use my ar in a social media platform like facebook instagram snapchat tiktok any other things that means the ar resides in the social media platform so these are the three fundamental things so before you start creating solutions ask yourself these are the three uh, i'll say basic categories that we have app web and social which you want to select it's very important end of the day it goes back to your customer what is the ease of use for the customer should it be for the app or should it be for a uh, web or should it be for the uh, social side of it? okay so this is where um, uh, i'm going to start instead of going more technical so what i have done is um, i i want to showcase with an example so that you understand how it can be applied so i'm going on to the first um, type app based ar so all the case studies from the next slide is going to be catered only to the app based ar okay when i say app based means i have deployed it in the smartphone okay and i'll show examples of both marker based ar as well as markerless ar okay and these are some of the prototypes that we have done okay so feel free to ask questions at the end of the session to see what uh, how it can be or if you have any other questions on app based ar only okay okay so the first question uh, the first case study uh, we kind of want to show cases um, uh, printers um, um, selling a printer okay and and then just put it across okay and it is a marker based ar solution okay uh, when i say marker based ar and i'll come back to the problem statement and why it's important is when we start creating solutions don't randomly create solutions just ask yourself what's my problem statement and how it is going to help my end goal it can be a sales person or it can be a customer so the first question is first uh, objective that we had is um sales person um he has to sell different types of printer let's assume it's a canon printer or epson printer or whatever okay and you know the printers are so huge and assuming that he has to travel to x number of locations to carry the printer okay so what happens is you can't carry the big printers throughout the only thing that he used to carry is brochures maybe videos okay uh, that's the max you can do but how about push using ar technology to help sell the functionalities of printers okay not only limit yourself to say how the printer looks but also to show the functionalities of the printer okay so uh, as i'm playing the video there's no music to it um, i can explain what happens so that you understand the tech behind this uh, uh, printer okay then go to mute this because there's no uh, background music so i can mute it okay so the first uh, uh, um, uh, set is it's it's an ar okay so first one of the things that we also want to do is um, can i track a person okay let's assume he goes to six different locations maybe one to pongol one to haugang and one to x location one to y location so the sales person will enter his name which zip code is going so that when he shares the experience because this is your uh, kpi or this is your return of investment how do i know whether he has shown this experience to that person whether the customer understood the model that's why we started getting this uh, data inside this so first thing is he enters uh, the password and he enters the zip code and once he goes inside uh, the functionality you can enter the zip code right over here 
and uh, just sign in you will you will see a typical web uh, or you will see a typical app based uh, um a typical app plan okay where you you have a interface you can talk about about as you will talk about the different types of printers it is more of a you have a 3d mod in the center and you also have some information that gets popped up okay that means the customer or the client can understand who we are what are the products that we are selling um and then one of the things that we have tested is you can see on the left side right over here there is something called show scale showcase and live scale okay showcase is just to show how the product looks in a 3d mode okay so that means i can uh, rope around it and see how the product looks my information is right over here okay um and then um, the different types of printers that i have the second uh, is live scale so live scale is basically your marker based ar so the question comes is before i show the marker how big the marker can be it's your choice you want to do an a3 size paper or you want to do an a4 size paper you want to do a stamp size paper as long as the camera can recognize the marker you should be able to do it so right now i'm just going to play it across so basically one of the things that this is think like it's like an instructional manual where you are able to uh, 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 see the printer so the marker is there you scan the marker you will be able to see the printer at the same time you are able to see the different functionalities of that particular printer the print speed the scanner where is my toner and drum locator where is my side tray locator where is my paper tray locator apart from looking at your brochure in a 2d space the ar what helps is it allows you to show it in a uh, in a 3d mode lab. that means you see a marker and you're able to do it so this is an example of how we can use uh, uh, ar in a i'll say sales uh, medium at the same time it's a marker based ar okay so this is first example of a case study of how printers are used okay i go to a very another simple example um home decor is a small prototype that we uh, uh uh is a small prototype set of prototypes that we did and this is one such prototype um and uh, i we took an example of a, a 3d way, uh, like a base uh, uh that we want to place it near the home uh, and what we are trying to do is uh, we want to uh, uh, be uh, apart from browsing in any amazon or a shopify or a lazada website we are also looking at um can we augment um, that particular ways um in a uh, uh, in, in in using app based stuff that's what the whole idea is okay so we call it as uh, home based okay uh, home decor um it's markerless so you saw first example is marker based you scan a marker you open your app app your camera opens up see the marker in documents that's first example the second example is no marker you are able to augment on a non reflective surface and this is to help understand how it works and just going to minimize my sound as i explain so basically it looks for non reflective surface and can i augment it onto any non reflective surface i can scale i can rotate i can move the advantage that i get using the markers that means i want to know how my uh base looks like as i start scaling as i start rotating and as i start placing anywhere i want it that means i want to buy a 50 dollar one or 100 dollar one i just want to know how it looks before i buy it so apart from using uh buying uh, or apart from looking at all these uh, uh websites this is one way of bringing your product into your living room that's my color so yeah okay very one single example of how my color is here folks okay uh uh so so the question uh so this is uh home decor and this is markerless ar okay so now i go to another example same uh, home decor but this time um, what we thought is um assuming that we have space okay assuming that it's an empty condo okay we and we took the same example of uh markerless ar we thought one product is good okay 
how about populating with multiple products because end of the day the user or the customer will not only have to limit to only sometimes one product but also can want to have multiple products okay let's assume i want to have a chair i want to have a sofa i want to have other x product right inside that one experience can i do it yes you can do it so i'm just pushing the functionality how much you can go with this uh, uh, marker list here apart from showing one product we can also show multiple products so another example uh the question that asked about how so far you can try looking at this and one way i i, I was trying to helping out getting the size of the sofa is using the scale i used to use my uh, finger pinch and make it slightly more uh, taller shorter i get i will be able to rotate it um and i should be able to place it wherever i want it to see how the scale of my chair looks like it looks small then i start up the scale bigger also then i want to tap in other products okay let me see can i bring in my sofa inside it again use your finger to pinch rotate scale and root place wherever you want it so you know how to how how the whole process works okay and if you feel like one is small one is big can i start scaling it so at least you know that you're not limiting yourself to that particular scale so all the scale that we are doing is using my phone and using my finger in my phone and i can able to pinch and i be able to rotate the scale and all those things apart from it you can also do paintings you can do wall clock kind of thing of course people always ask us this question is like can can i do only on the floor can i do it on the vertical wall because all this marker that you see it detects horizontal surface that means it goes to the ground you can tap anything on the ground and i can place it but there are also solutions available for vertical placing that means i see a wall and i assuming that i am a i'm an art person i want to uh, before i buy a painting i want to see how the painting fits on my wall so can i augment it yes you can augment it so those concept slightly advanced but it is called vertical uh, uh, markers are basically where you are able to augment on a vertical surface think like paintings or think like painting like blocks okay uh um, the question comes is uh, how do you know the measurements can fit into the living hall um there are ar apps available now you can actually measure uh, between the rooms and say this is my measurement of the room then you can start bringing your um uh, objects right inside the space okay now um, this is something maybe you uh, again still these are prototypes that uh, just for the sake of webinar we quickly did it um this is more towards the tiling and i and and i and go back to the examples of covid times and say because i can't go to the shop but at the same time i want to know how whether i want to uh, uh remodel my house with some new tiles kind of thing okay so this is more towards like um, can i um, uh, augment tiles the smaller or bigger kind of a thing this is one such to en enhance the experience stuff so right over here so basically uh, it's only for one time can i do it for a bigger space you can do it for bigger space basically you can um, measure one size of the existing tile that you have and um, left and um, just finish it off and then um taps and then you can change the texture of the tile um and also you can scale the size of the tile to see how my tile looks like so all these are possible using the app because the app has a space of uh, you can start measuring the distance you can start augmenting some objects but you can also figure out whether i can place a small amount of information in a small area like this tile and can i augment or can i tile it across so this is one another very uh, interesting example of how ar can be used inside the uh, furniture side or i'll say the interior side of the home decor okay so all these are three examples that i tapped in across um one is the uh, the waste second is the furniture uh, furnitures third is the time 
so these are three different uh, um, uh, examples okay um, and, and and why people go into this kind of a medium i think if you look at shopify or if you look at uh, some of the big uh, 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 online stores okay we have started to implement ar inside us if you type in shopify ar you will immediately see a ar plugin embedded right inside it because one of the reasons ar is getting popular is because the conversion rates are high because you don't have to buy online and then decide and it is not fitting let me go back and return it back okay so the the low return rates is very important for uh, online purchases um, and there are high possibility of high conversion rates because people exactly know what they want and um, and 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 your your target audience is right the million that means you exactly know you can go to one of the deals go to online type in i look at my product i can augment how the product looks and uh, and i'll see how it uh, sits on my uh, home now that's that's the analysis what we looked at audience conversion rates and low return rates okay so two examples one is for sales um, one is for the home decor more on the interior side of it that we have seen across okay uh yeah. okay so uh, this is uh, i'm just showing you multiple tools uh, available uh, this is specific to ios platform i like i like this uh, chick space where um, um the yeah, because I, if you remember okay when you want to buy uh, this is more again to the sales side but more towards the marketer as here um and uh, when uh, assuming that i want to buy a uh, fridge or i want to buy a microwave i can go online search for it fine sometimes i go to a uh, uh, challenger i go to quotes and what i will do is i go what ask one of the sales person and say okay can you tell me how many liters is this what is the functionality of this one okay so the sales person will be able to help you uh, answer most of the questions okay that's the typical marketing sale people always do they'll tell you this discount is there also okay but forget the discounts and ask yourself is like can i understand the product think like it's an instructional manual but using the ar form okay so again we are still in app based but i am just giving another example of instructional manual where this is a toaster that we as a prototype we put across and say i i want to understand the functionality of toaster okay or uh, i want to buy a toaster yes i can read how it looks but it would be much more interesting for me to see in visual form how or the parts of the the uh, the toaster is la so just going to play it across and when you understand the home decor and when you understand this is basically this is uh, what uh, again the same thing you can scale you can rotate and you can also start um, understanding the functionalities before you start buying the let's say the toaster or if you want to buy a refrigerator okay how does the whole thing works across this fits because every time you buy something online you'll get a 20 page booklet as me i by the time we understand the 20 page booklet it'll be very tough for people to understand so can ar help us in providing that information nobody is asking us to remove that but ar will add value to this one so this is let's play it again it's a short video but just want to show uh, the application of where ar can be so one is more towards um the other side of it and still it's it's marker is kind of thing so that's pretty much it so each step can be uh told as you start uh, looking at the parts of it okay so and the numbers that you see at the end is basically the different steps that you are trying to tell the customer now okay so we we have seen more on the uh, how it helps a customer from the home side interior design more on the sales side of it okay there is also a surprising element that comes across is on the fashion side okay because again we are still in the app we are not deviating from the app we are still in app and 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 i, I believe uh, uh fashion tech is something very interesting uh, that's coming up that means uh, people are now designing the clothes um, using um, technology and uh, and how can ai uh, help in that way okay um, and and one important uh, step is assuming that um, 
uh, I can create, I am creating a garment, okay? It's very, one is you can ship the garment to put a prospective client and say, this is the new type of fabric that I've created, how does it look and all those things. That's one way of typically of doing, okay? But during this COVID times, it's tough to uh, send, uh, how, how do you push this uh, uh, sale uh, because of, I can, and AR help in a e easier way to do it, okay? Um, so that's where uh, we thought about having a very interesting uh, um, uh, say, case study of how it can be helped with, on the fashion tech side of it. Okay, um, it's not um, it's coming up. Uh, it's it's there where people have started to design their own uh, whole uh, garments inside uh, the space. At the same time, supplementing and using AR to showcase that. Um, this is uh, one such um, uh, info demo. So that's um, fashion tech. Um, quick backdrop is basically uh, COVID times they used to send brochures and they used to samples. Now we are bringing right into where the catalog is there and we are able to scan the picture of the catalog and bringing the, um, the, the material to life. Okay? And, and, and the best part of the whole pipeline that we're trying to follow is AR is one of the components. Okay, The journey starts with the idea, then they go to that uh, 3D clothes software, we design the clothes and we bring the clothes into that um, uh, engine and we augment it and market based AR. Okay. Um, a very interesting way of how uh, technology is getting into all industries. So when people ask me, like, uh, which industry is getting more, every industry, it can get into every industry. You tell me an industry and I can get your problem statement for that one. Okay. End of the day, we go back to the 101 as is it helping us to solve a particular problem or engage the customer more. And that's very simple uh, things that we are looking for. Okay. Uh, so that's, uh, um, the, so I'm, I'm gonna stop here for the app because there are a lot more I can show on the app based, but uh, since I want to divide on three sessions, I will uh, pause for a couple of minutes and I'll be able to answer any questions with regards to that. Um, do we need, I'll start from Stephen. Uh, 
do we need VS to create? Uh, what covers session two? Session two is web AR. Session three is uh, social AR. Uh, so, uh, so web AR has uh, some examples on right now. Whatever we are seeing is more on how do I create solutions uh, for app based people download the app and create solutions. Okay. Um, for Stephen, question: Do you we need? Uh, um, I can drop my email later so you can reach out to me. Uh, I think you can ask NPUC Learning Hub. I think there, there's a scan code after that. Um, I'm sure. Wow, there's a lot of questions, okay. Uh, what are the average time to develop the solutions for Niche AR? Quickly, um, um, roughly a month or two if you already have a 3D model in place, okay? Um, if you don't, I think I'll, I'll, I'll say well, a month or two, you should be able to do it quickly. Uh, cost um, uh, cost is based on um, ideas la. so why fashion is very different is because you're actually creating an IP it's not like our typical thing that means you're designing the clothes it takes time for designing the clothes and after that you're documenting if you think you already have a cloth design okay uh, and in case if you're very in, into the fashion design uh, the people right now people are using a software called flow 3d uh, that's how they actually design the garments if you are into Clothes 3D, you are able to have the software. Uh, if you have that uh, garment design in Clothes 3D, it takes a week for you to bring it into that, whatever I showed you, not more than that. Um, how extensive they are being used in uh, S3 market? Oh my God, they got a lot. Um, again, extensive education is important. Not many people are uh, aware there is an AR. Where AR is getting popular, at least within the Asian side, is the social side of AR. It's big, okay? If you look at app-based, it's still catching up, okay? Same thing with web. But the social side of AR has a lot more potential. Yes, you talked about IPR, Sephora, Nike, and all those things. Um, with regards to Charles, uh, most of the project use Unity have worked Unreal as an internal difference. Unreal is more towards photorealistic. Um, I will not say more on the AR side, but it's catching up. I will say more on the VR side, uh, Unreal has got a lot of potential. Uh, okay, Janet, for a question on marker and markerless. Uh, marker based means you look at an image and you augment the information. Marker learn means you don't have to look at anything. You just look at your surface and it documents. That's a fundamental difference, marker based. It recognizes a predefined image and documents the information. Um, yes. Oh, can you think of a way of AI can be used for charitable causes? Yes. The social AI is the best way. Uh, I think there is a, a lot of people are actually doing uh, social AI. The charitable causes now not for app base but social side it's easy because they want to engage and they also want people to share their ar platform to others so i think social AI is the best way to do it are there free apps um free apps as in uh, i didn't get a question on free apps um free apps if you you can always download from play store or app store to uh, download these kind of apps. Uh, IKEA is one, and there are other free apps that is available right now that's in the market. Uh, and 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 also, if I know there are people, a lot of people are asking um, the best way to learn. If you want to do a self-learn kind of a thing, in I know there are a lot of Udemy courses coming up. But I, I think the best thing is start with um, always your problem statement and ask yourself, "I'm trying to create a solution for this." Okay, and uh, there are programming related solutions there are non-programming related solutions okay and uh, why non-programming related solutions is important is because um uh, just on the learning aspect because a lot of people i see a lot of questions on i cannot answer all but i'm trying to specifically answer a couple of quick questions on the learning side okay if you want to learn unity is one option where you can learn the AR side of it okay but it involves programming okay uh, so the um, when when it comes to uh, um, uh, the programming side of it, okay, or the AR software, okay, Unity is one. So if I want to use marker based, uh, I've used before, yeah, uh, for uh, learning marker based AR. These are the two things: Unity, marker based AR. Okay, 
but both involves programming if you are scared about programming do not touch it that's one important thing i'll tell you because but alternatively there are some non programming solutions that's coming up okay um if you are a mac person or if you are a designer okay um i can tell you uh, there are one uh, app that you can try is um, called adobe aero a e r o okay adobe aero um, adobe aero is like a authoring tool it also does ar solutions uh, it's more for retail it is more for designers okay so that means i don't have to do programming but i can still do a lot uh, with uh, adobe aero okay um uh, so that's adobe aero specific to uh, um, um apple platform and uh, unity can do both for android web and ios also okay but there are other solutions available but again uh, these two are the most common ones i can say um okay so with regards to okay so I, i'll throw open my uh, connect, uh, contact information at the end of the slide but let me start the session to uh, again i have a lot of questions i'll try to speak to uh, the host and see whether i can get my questions and i'll try to answer all the things okay um any hands on instead of theory i didn't get hands on uh, if you say hands on i have only a one hands on on social ai quiz um, at the last of my slide um, because these are app downloads um i was initially think of putting it online but the problem is if uh, i i have only 3 hours okay if i don't know if a particular person don't know how to install it be very difficult okay so that's why i'm not sharing any of the content information now but one social ar at the last it's going to be um, um, for you to experience now for sure uh i i think i'll come back to you on that one on the course okay Yeah, I'll speak to the NTUC guys and come back to you on that one. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to uh, start my uh, web AR, and I'll just hold on to it. Uh, then we will, uh, um, uh, and I will try to answer the questions that we have. Okay. Okay. So let's go into the web AR. Uh, I, I've not stopped. I have all the questions. I'll try to uh, answer it before I leave up for sure. Um, Adobe Arrow. if you are looking for something uh, apart from uh, this thing so unity is one you can look for um, adobe arrow is another one that you can look for um, if you are looking for a third party tools um, you can look at a uh, paid one i'll say um, i'm just typing it in the zoom chat so feel free to uh, look for um, these are when i say third party means it's it's, it's paid la Uh, so these are the um, two ones: Unity, Adobe Arrow, uh, Zapier is one. There is eight. Well, there's a lot, but I'm just putting the common ones that I've used uh, uh, in the last couple of years now. Okay. Okay. So now let me go into uh, 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 Web AR, and I will answer to Edwin's question: What is the typical cost to develop AR? It it it, it depends on how complex it is. You can it goes from four thousand all the way to twenty thousand dollars. Depends on how complex your application is okay, and who's doing it okay okay so let's go into web ar and i'll come back and help you answer some other other questions um so web ar very simple so whatever we have seen right now is more on um, app based that means people use the phone download it and that's how it works okay the second time that we will be looking at is call web ar where I just have to put my link, type in the link in my browser, and I'll be able to uh, view the uh, AR side of it. Okay, um, so AR content is displayed on a smartphone using a web browser like Chrome or Safari. It allows, it skips the downloads of the App Store, okay, and it gets access faster. Okay. Um, good example i'll tell you but i don't have that demo with me uh, but i one good example is assuming that events industry opens up okay and people like ar solutions okay you can't ask a, a customer who comes to that events in the events will happen only for two days okay but don't expect the guy to come to that event register for it and ask him to download an app he will not download that app 
So the question comes is the ease of use. You want to make sure the technology is easy. So what he does is you scan the QR code, it opens up it in a browser and you'll be able to do it. So that's the advantage with web AR, okay? Um, so an example of a journey of a typical web AR, okay? Um, I, I just put it as a customer, not on the event side, but more on, uh, on a home decor kind of thing, like this typical journey, okay? The customer will see a promotion. The promotion can be on a, uh, a newspaper, on a magazine, or on a poster. You can decide where you want the promotion to have, okay? And then there is a small QR code or some link for call to action, and the person scans the QR code, okay? And once the QR code is scanned and you open, it opens up the link, like how we use it, uh, the, the, the trace to thing, where you scan the QR code, it opens up the link and you type the information. So you open the uh, link, okay? So when I open the link, it opens up in a browser, okay? And the browser will have some information it will also have some uh, image kind of a thing and there will be a small AR button there. You just have to tap on the AR button. It opens up the camera from the browser and you're able to interact with the AR element. Okay, and then you can always exit. You will be still on the web page where you started. You want to share it to your friends, your family, you can always do it. So the journey is very simple. It starts on a browser, it starts on a uh, call to action, all the way it ends on a browser, okay? No, um, uh, what do you call it? No need to download an application. So that's the typical journey that we look for, okay? So when um, you look into the uh, web AR types, okay? We looked at scene view, we looked at uh, set view and analyzing, but I'll tell the most common ones. At the, the third uh, row that you see here, what can I do with web AR? So in uh, in my app based, we saw marker based, we saw markerless, uh, we can do location, everything, okay? But what is what is the things that we can do within the web AR side? When I say surface tracking, that is your markerless. When you say marker tracking, that means marker based AR, that means it can recognize image. It can also 3D view, it can also have your own um, configuration of their uh, AR view also. So these are uh, very important uh, things with regards to uh, the web AR, okay? You can have a normal scene with a 3D element to it. You can also have an AR scene with a 3D element to it. So you, these are the things that people can actually uh, do inside the web AR, okay? just a small framework, okay? So just summarizing the benefits of web AR. No mobile app download. It's faster to deploy, okay? You don't have to do updates because it's residing on a browser, okay? You can um, update on the backend automatically, the browser gets updated. It integrates with the statistical tools. Your SEOs, SCMs, how many people have visited the website, everything can be tracked inside, okay? And it is compatible with most browsers, okay? So these are the benefits of web AR. No mobile apps, fast deployment, no updates, integration with your statistical tools. End of the day, analytics is important. I don't want to have an AR because AR is cool. Yes, I know AR is cool because I'm from that field. But apart from it, does it help me move my business across to a lot? Okay, that's where the natural uh, integration with statistical tool works. Okay, And the last is, it is, is it compatible with most, uh, and it is compatible with most web browsers? Um, an important step, if you want to go analytic side is people spend more time on web pages and you will see a lot of conversion that's happening because they see not only the image, but they can also see an AR element to it. Okay. And whatever you see on the app based, you remember I showed a base and I was able to scale and I was able to rotate and I want to place it right wherever it is. You can do exactly the same thing in my web based here also. Okay. Fourth. It's a single click and high engagement. I just have to click, my engagement starts. Um, and end of the day, you are happy. How does my product looks in my living room? And that means I don't have to think twice whether I'm going to buy it or not buy it. That means 25% decreased in car companions. Okay. Um, and third, last important thing that is actually getting more traction these days is the intent to purchase the product. 
oh wow this this product looks cool this sofa looks cool this table looks cool and then that interest will allow you to go to the next step of can i go start purchasing the product that's the cool benefits of where they are at present wherever what based on our experience where things are moving on web ar side is marketing and advertising a lot of people are actually using web ar side business card uh, you can even do exhibit booth uh, fast moving consumer good brands enterprise all these are tapping onto the web ar technology because they see a value in which that instead of going on app based model where people have to download the app can i also not use can i use web ar for this one okay now before i start doing the case study an important uh, step that we have to understand is the customer journey i know we saw the customer journey before uh, this is kind of kind of descriptive way uh, how it works okay and why it is important is for two facts uh, and i'll come back to case study because this is very relevant and this is a proven uh, model at this point of time assuming take my case assuming that i want to buy a tv or i want to buy a refrigerator okay first thing i'll do is like i and my wife will actually go google and say okay this refrigerator is cool this is 25 liters how is the review i will do my back end research before i go meet my sales person it's relevant everyone does it not me and everyone most of the people who are who has a laptop or with a mobile phone are the, this is how behavior have changed previously it was i go to the store i can go look around things and i will come back twice or thrice before i go and finalize my sale this time what happens is 60 percent 70 percent i exactly know what i want i will do my research my sales person is not going to convince me what that information is all about because i would i, I can ask him but in back end i will not have known what this information is all about okay that means two thirds of the customer's journey is completed before he goes to the sales before before he goes to the store okay and 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 that's why the key challenge is we call it as a personalized shopping experience um uh, and why personalized shopping experiences we want to make sure that we understand what we are getting into what product it is it is it is it of a good value how is the review okay um uh, are there any different faults because they are investing on a product okay and that means they need to have that space that we are in before they go buy that product that's important that's the challenge and that is what people are trying to hit across okay and i want to put this uh, whatever i told in the last couple of slides into this one single slide think of an iceberg okay dive divide the iceberg into the top and the bottom half okay you will see about the top half it looks pretty cool you have a small little iceberg that's your brick and mortar okay do you know what it is it is pretty cool it is a decision to walk inside the store pick a product to purchase and make the transaction okay but the bottom iceberg is the crucial part people exactly know what they want they do the research okay and the post pandemic I still call post one because things are moving up, things are opening up. The behavior has changed. I don't look at pre-COVID. I'm looking at post-COVID. Post-COVID, people are accustomed to online. People are used to getting online things. Now that's where things go across. Is like the shopping journey, the research element has moved a lot. Two thirds of how people have two thirds of the journey are being mapped before even I step into the brick and mortar. and that's the the journey that you have to keep this in mind when we start working on this one, okay so why i talked about customer journey is because when you look at shopify when you look at uh, amazon or when you look at any other things they know exactly this journey and that is very important okay? and this is where people are trying it okay i go to the case studies directly uh, so whatever you see it's exactly the same ways except that i am going to have it as part of my link okay so where i go open a browser i just type in the link and i will am able to see how it does it look like okay okay so now um, so when you, when you look at this the it, it's a, it's it's hosted on a, a, a free amazon server now basically what happens is um, uh, you see a product the product that you see on the left side is a 3d product the product you see uh, the information that you see is on it's not a typical website i just put it as a prototype okay 
So there's an element, it can be an image. So this is my 3D element here. And this is my information. You can have different colors. That means you are giving choices to the user to say, boss, you can have a red base, you can have a green base, you can have a black base, it's completely up to you. You make the choices and you see whether it fits in your thing. And there's a small QR code to scan the QR code and see whether it works or not. Okay. Um, and I'll play this one as I start I'm just uh, explaining it first. And since the center half that you see is a 3D element, you can orbit around to see how does my product look like. You're not limiting your product to just, uh, uh, yeah, we are still in the 3D mode. That means in my website, there's a 2D mode, 3D mode, this is a 3D mode. I'm able to visualize how does it look like. I can change colors, still not in AR mode in 3D mode, okay? Now, when I click on AR, it opens up and I can tap onto my surface. And when I close it, I can go back to my browser, okay? So right now I'm going to look at my uh, surface and when I look at my surface, it taps and I can place it. And I can place it and I can move it, I can rotate it, I can scale it, it's completely up to you. So whatever I customize it in my page is can be augmented. That means I have a blue base, I have a green base and I have a yellow base. You want to customize your blue base and you want to augment it, you can do it. You want to do a yellow base, you can do it. So the question comes is your configuration can be done in a web browser and that configuration can be brought inside an AR mode. That's the objective of this prototype. So one, what we saw in the first app was just documenting. Can I customize it? You can customize it. But I'm just showing in a browser capacity is like, we always choose colors. So when I choose red, green, blue, I can choose colors. But apart from choosing colors, can I also go into the, yeah. So that's example of home decor, but more on the web browser, on the web side of it, okay. I'll come back to the, Home decor, scan QR code is through third party. Uh, you, you don't have to use QR code. You can just use a button also um, that we can go across. The cons, yes, there are uh, some uh, cons for web AR. I'll come back after this. Um, uh, the second um, uh, thing that you want to show is uh, more on the retail side. Um, it, this was uh, quite interesting. Um, this is more on the bicycle side of it. Um, because we just did a lot of home decor and I said like, can we do something on the bicycle? Okay. Um, same thing, same experience. Uh, I want to buy a bicycle and um, can I augment a bicycle on my um, home? How does it look like? Um, you want to gift it to your kids? You want to gift it to your uh, friends which our family? It's completely up to you, right? The best part of this is uh, like what I said, the first example what I showed was configurators, that means change colors. The second type that I'm showing you is it's still configurator, but I want to understand what are the different parts of my bike before I want to augment it. So, so that I understand what does this bike, oh, what, how many chains or how many gears this bike has, okay? Where is my, uh, how, uh, where is my, uh, how, how many seats I have, okay? Uh, is there a lighting system inside it, okay? So these are different things that I want to understand of the parts of it. So, this is the second example, more towards a bicycle configurator. I mean, my it was slow, I'm just gonna push it across. So right now, whatever, whatever you see are in 3D, um, 3D mode, uh, where you're able to see it and you can, um, tap onto my surface and you can document my bicycle right into the surface. It documents right on my browser also. Okay, so that's an advantage that you can have. You can rotate it and uh, you can scale it also. Okay. Um, so that's an example, okay. Um, I, I have annotations also, but I didn't record this time, but yes, you can also do annotations to show the parts of the bike as well. Okay, so 
when as we are um, 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 answering the question of the the web based ar okay one drawback immediate instantly that comes to the picture is um you cannot do really high end uh, ar solutions in web as of today okay when i say as of today is because technology is improving um you have to also keep in mind that in order for my web based ar to work your net connection has to be active if you don't have internet your solution will not work okay so everything has its own plus and minus but i'm just giving you heads up on, on the web ar side yes data is one of the uh, things that you should take care but the compromising that people do is do you want the user to download the app or do you want the user to browse and see the experience it's it's a it's a business call that people always make so with regards to the web based ar uh, you the best, biggest con is you need to have always the wifi connection if you don't have internet it doesn't work okay and uh, data is an issue and third is the technology as of today is still not there to create a very high end ar solutions okay things are improving but at, as of now don't expect as complex solutions as app based can be done using web based okay uh, will 5g solve the problem yes uh yes with regards to whatever you see here uh, in case you if you have noticed it um, there are two ways i pushed um, i just want to show please uh, answering the question um this is one way of user experience la explicitly explicitly say enter in ar that means they know you have to click on the button the second way people actually use is having some kind of an icon here and just say ar there and when you tap on it you can actually get inside the ar mode so these are the two ways explicitly say that that's an ar mode that means you never start your browser in ar mode you always start on a page that means you need a hosting where you drop let's say i am a web developer okay i know javascript okay and uh, i know how to make a website can i make a ar solutions for you it be much more easier because you know how the web development works i am a javascript person i am an html person i am a css person i know how to make create a static website i can go to wix and create a website can i implement this ar component inside my static website yes you can do it okay there are solutions available to create a non unity based ar solutions as well okay so let's go into uh where do i choose web app technology content and promotion okay so basically the big difference okay um that's where the question asked was i'm just re replying to that particular thing the first thing that you make the choices you as a business person or you as a events person should be making the call whether you want the person to download or not to download your objective is always remain the same if you think you want the person to download then go for it if you think no man i my event is only 2 days i don't expect the user i have 20000 visitors i don't expect the person to download or install this i just want to go to the browser and have my experience then you decide not to download so the first question you have to make the call is web on app is to download or not to download that's a business objective call second okay um very important thing should i care about my phone my customer is using yes and for two reasons is because this uh i can take a i can give a break after 5 minutes okay 10:30 i can give a break for 10 minutes before i start the social media okay coming back to this uh should i care about my phone uh, my customer is using yes so when um, why because um, uh, maybe during the break i'll post the link um this markerless ar technology is supported by um, ar supported devices okay? that means your phone should be uh, ar compatible and i will post the link during the break uh, when you go to the link you will be able to see whether your phone supports the technology or not okay for marker based ar doesn't matter but for markerless they use this tech space called slam that i showed in the beginning so your phone has to support that even for web or app that means you have to keep in mind that that's my phone supports the solution that you are trying to make if you say that 70% will support then it's fine with me okay but if you say only 20% supports because you need some very high end phone then that's a different thing la 
So that's why I said like web AR is also compatible with mobiles that supports this guy, AR Core or AR Pen. Okay. So when you go online, you can always look at your that particular uh, link and say whether your phone supports or not. Okay. Uh, Appless means spaceless AR. Okay. Um, and this is also important. And this comes back to the first point that I raised: download or not download. Okay. Some people are um, doesn't want the uh, the application or the solution to occupy more space. Okay. Uh, in their phones because they they don't want to have uh, a lot of um, uh, applications which occupy six, uh, 5 GB, 6 GB or 1 GB of data into the in their uh, internal storage. Lab. So appless means spaceless AR kind of a thing. Okay. The fourth is very important. Okay. Uh, and if you have any questions on the fourth one, feel free to ask me later. Okay. Content matters for both mediums. Okay. Uh, and whether the content is engaging and relevant. Um, important part is if you look at uh, the trend that is happening right now is assuming that I have a furniture, I can augment the furniture, I can put it across. Ask a 3D person or a 3D artist to do it. Okay. The second way people are doing content is um, if you have an iPhone, there is this uh, concept called, there is a tech space called uh, uh, LiDAR scanner. Okay. LiDAR scanner is basically, it allows you to open the new, new iPhones as this new camera. LiDAR camera. So what it does is it allows you to uh, scan your object. Uh, at this point, the tech is very new, but it allows you to give you kind of decent results on the 3D model side. Now. And uh, it allows you to scan your, assume, assuming I have a remote, I can scan this remote and it, based on the scan, it allows me to convert that photograph into a 3D model. Okay. How accurate it is? 60%, 70%, but it, it, it gives you the thing. Okay, it's faster to do. Okay, so when it re revolves around content creation, 3D model is one. Second is start looking at 3D scanning. Okay, and something very important that is getting relevant these days because you have to churn out a lot of models in small amount of time, and 3D models are uh, uh, you know, getting traction these days. 3D scanning are getting uh, traction these days. Okay, so uh, with regards to uh, uh, which do you prefer, uh, technology, content, promotion? It all comes to one important thing. How are you planning to communicate your experience? I think people miss the boat that you would have got an amazing solution, uh, but until you promote that, uh, nobody will know uh, how it works, okay? Whether it's going to be web or whether it's going to be, uh, okay? Uh, and, uh, and how do you promote it? Facebook, websites, YouTube, it's completely up to you. People see the video, then they go back to the website or they go back to the app, they download it and they can um, start utilizing it. Okay, so that's uh, an important part of uh, uh, solutions. Okay, so uh, uh, the session three is um, social AR. It's 10 30. Um, let's take a 10 minute break. Um, I'm still there. I'll try to answer as much questions as I want. Uh, we'll start session three at uh, 10.40 a.m. Okay, so in the meantime, um, um, with regards to questions, okay. So uh, let me start answering the question on the cameras. Okay, I, I, I did research on a couple of things with regards to which uh, apps. If you're having um, iPhone, this is for Joy Lee, okay. Um, sub I'm going to pause my share and I will come back to your question. Okay, the one that I have used, uh, one was Polycam and one second was uh, Fulon. Okay, 3D scanning apps that I have personally tested. I'm not going to vouch for it, but something that I've tested, Fulon and uh, Polycam. Uh, this is all um, iOS apps. Uh, can AR be integrated across multiple example for um, marker AR, the static images? I think you can ask this feature on the recordings. Okay, with regards to uh, static images on TV or computer screens. Um, the computer screens, yes, and TV screens, yes. The only difference is when I see a marker, okay, from the TV screen, 
make sure it is your camera is not seeing much of reflection because once the reflection is seen the the uh, the features of the marker will be gone so i might avoid using it on a tv or a computer screen because it has got reflective surface uh, reflective surface tend to hide the features of the marker that you have given so uh, posters yes for sure uh, uh, mac posters definitely yes but for tv screens i might avoid it uh so qlon has both android okay uh, for and ios i test for both both are paid apps um, uh, I, i don't think so i can uh, none of the apps that uh, poly uh, cam is free uh, but uh, qlon is uh, fine and uh, there was one more uh, that um, matterport in case if you have looked at uh, matterport is also a scan uh, software um doing doing all this ar needs programming is a dual design uh ar needs programming um uh, depends on which software you're using um if you use an adobe site no need of programming um you talked very interesting part of ux design ux design is very important because um uh, you have to gauge how the user experience going to be okay and a lot of mistakes or the learners these days do is they start learning some tools and will say boss i'm going to come up with some very good experience and that's pretty much i learn unity i learn programming and i am an ai developer yes it's fact but when you go to a development in uh, um uh, when you go to a company okay you will have a person who will put the journey across the ux journey so ux is becoming a very important thing uh what does unity do unity is a game engine uh and it allows you to create solutions for both uh, web uh, um you can say uh, app based um for vr also so basically it's a game engine now it also can create game develop games so what what's happening right now is we are using game engines to create non gaming solutions that's the whole idea behind it uh it's hero Okay. Uh, in social AI. Uh, next session. Okay, I sent this across. Uh, is web AI chargeable for each use or I don't think so. They they don't want to charge it. It's more of an experience. No charge. Only if you want to charge a customer. I don't think so. There will be a chargeable for this. The only thing that the charge will happen is your domain name and the space. is ar based on ai uh, i will say that is the direction uh, uh, it's actually going right now um, um, one dan this is for question on daniel side of it okay um, the new social uh, the social ar one of the things that people use uh, i don't know they have used snapchat or not um, um, snapchat uh, uses a software called lens studio to create lenses and all those things okay uh, they are incorporating uh, machine learning into uh, the ar element um that means uh, you can actually um, create a model in which your lens open your camera at your filter and it can actually look into your water bottle and say whether this is a bottle or this is a book kind of a thing it can recognize objects for you so um I can show an example uh, with regards to ai and uh, best courses to learn i think if you are open to learning uh, uh, uh unity uh, unity is a starting point la in case if you are trying to get into that okay i'm just going to show one example this is more for um, daniel is ar based on ai um because this is something new um, uh, i didn't want to show some advanced topics but i i will uh, open up this uh, share across um this is for um object detection we always saw marker based markerless okay um the technology is moving rapidly says that the apps can detect objects for you and it can augment information based on the object that you've seen okay um an example that i'm showing is like a shoe scanning that is pre scan and say this is a different type of shoe i can go and see the shoe the shoe is not a 3d model the shoe is an actual shoe but i open the phone 
my camera sees it it looks at the shoe and it documents information across so this is um object scanning i'll say i'll say intermediate to advanced okay so market based markerless and now it can look at objects okay so you look at a three uh, physical object and you can actually augment that information across so this is also that's coming up that's why i said that ml ai is kind of integrating into um the space take more questions uh, okay so uh, i was this question on marker based ar and markerless okay maybe i'll try to help uh the person again uh, still i have five more minutes uh, feel free to post questions and i'll try to give some examples okay um uh, for marker based and markerless okay uh, i'll i'll again put in another example uh i i'll take an example of packaging okay um and assuming that uh, i want to buy a toy for my kid okay um i go to my toy service and i buy a toy for my kid okay and what we do we buy the toy we come home the the kid takes a toy out the packaging will be staying there in the room for a couple of days and after that it will be thrown out okay and then the kid will play with the toy how do i use the packaging to the extent in which can i bring ar uh, element into that okay so example of marker based ar is this is one such example so basically this is lego uh, again a prototype uh, not on a, a, a fully functional level we got this package from lego uh, avengers package one of the characters so one this is marker based ar by which each side of the package is a marker that means when i see the app when the app sees this marker it documents some information it can be a 3d model it can be an animation it can be animation with an audio okay so what we have done is each side of the package is six different markers and each side of the marker is going to augment the information across so when you flip over all sides there are six markers each marker is going to show you different kind of animation okay so we took the uh, animation from minecraft and dropped it inside and we have some that means the packaging is not going to waste because it has got some value to you okay so this is what we call it as marker based ar so look at the marker you are augmenting some information kind of very low app based ar and each side of the market goes into a different solution you can have animations you can have audios another side opens up another market comes so this is marker based okay this marker based is predefined we tell when you see this marker or when you see this image you augment this information when you see this image you augment this information so this is uh, an example of how marker based ar is so that means these are predefined can can i change the image after i install that no you cannot change the image the image is predefined it is built based on those six images so wherever i see this image the information gets popped up Okay, so that's with uh, marker based. Okay, and markerless is what I showed you right now with regards to uh, you know non-reflective surface. Okay, so basically what I so something like this. So this is non-reflective surface. You don't have to see any marker. You don't have to see any images. You open the app. You open the camera. You tap onto this the surface, and you're able to see it. That's markerless ar okay so the two fundamental difference between marker based ar and markerless ar is for marker you need to make sure that you have uh, you are seeing the predefined marker why is it predefined means before your application is built you're telling what the marker is the second type is markerless where you don't need any predefined images as long as it is not reflective you are able to augment the image okay hope it clarifies 
Okay, for two more minutes before I start. Oops. Um, You have to ask um, the courses from NTUC on this one. Uh, the question of what AR cannot do concurrently, um, it's it's kind of thing you always wanted to do multiplayer. If you know what multiplayer is, okay. Can I can I bring two people inside the same experience? It is uh, uh, it, it'd be helpful if if two people can come inside um, the same experience, okay. The one that is currently that been tested out, there are a few people who have tested in HoloLens and all those things, but I'm just talking about a smartphone or a web-based AR or a social AR kind of thing, because not everybody can afford HoloLens. So just keep this in mind because it's a $3,000 one, so nobody can afford it. It's about mass market. If can everyone having a smartphone or let's assume I have a family, I want to buy a furniture, I'm sitting at Orchard and my wife is sitting at Hogong. Can I bring both people inside my experience? It's the something that people are uh, testing out. Uh, uh, so that's uh, something that you should uh, look for. I think uh, multiplayer, uh, bringing multiple inside the experience is something that is uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, for Joy Lee, uh, what kind of ARS hologram? Okay. Uh, it's a good question. Um, uh, I don't know whether you've seen. Um, Sorry to cut away from this, but there is one um, that we have tested closely and there is available in the marketplace also, and not for Android. Um, uh, what kind of AR is, oh, I didn't get the question of uh, hologram yet. If you can clarify the question, then I can help out. What kind of AR is? Hologram. Okay, hologram is more of a projection technique. If you look at Star Wars 10 years back, be mind, okay? You will have seen that uh, guy and you will see the guy walking in a hologram and speaking about it, okay? Um, if, if you really want to test out this, there is one, uh, if you're an iPhone user, uh, feel free to test out, um, I forgot the name, um, that uh, I plan to show, but I am still in the experimental stage of this one, hologram. So this app, uh, I think they are still in a beta site, um, um, only for iOS, okay? So it allows you to, uh, um, uh, allow you to create a hologram about yourself. Think like, I am the salesperson. Can I make myself available in my table and speak to me or sell me the product? Okay. Star, uh, um, Star Wars was one of the, if you want to go back as a, you know, as a 
and we shouldn't say, wow, look at how this character has come to life in a small farm kind of a thing. This hologram is basically the same concept. You can shoot yourself and some think that you're selling a product and take that part of it um, and you can actually augment it right in your table, okay? That hologram is very famous. Um, the restriction is it's only on iOS devices. Must I always develop AR app for Android and iOS security? You don't need to do separate. Uh, basically, development is one. That's why people sometimes stick to Unity because one project deploy in two different platforms. Okay, so they always start with Android because it's faster approval process and then slowly move into uh, iOS, okay? But there are a few people who want some very advanced concept and they want to stick to iOS only. So it's a choice that you can make. UX design is easy to learn. No programming based required. Okay, so I'm going to start with my next uh, session, um, social AR. Um, so we saw app, we saw web. The viral thing that's coming up in the market right now is called social AR, okay? Um, I'm not coming in depth on Snapchat, but in case if you want to know more about Snapchat, feel free to reach out to me any point of time because uh, Snapchat is also a very big uh, thing, okay? Um, so when you talk about, we saw app, we saw web, um, now we're getting into what we call it as social AR, okay? Um, social AR is very uh, interesting. Um, the definition of social AR is your documented reality is deployed through social media apps like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, or else it's, okay? That means apart from sharing your selfie pictures, um, you also can create AR experiences, okay? Um, and why it's getting popular because these are camera filters, basically, front front face camera. Because in case if you know what it is, okay, if you have noticed, okay, at any point of time you open your phone, uh, you can look at your camera. There is always front facing camera. There is back facing camera. Okay, by kind of hindsight, if you noticed, all my solutions were back facing camera. Okay, I my camera looks at the surface, a marker or a floor. It is looking from the back of my camera. So right now we are flipping the camera around to my social VR. That means it looks at my face, camera filters. Okay. So fundamental difference between app, web, and social AR. Okay. Uh, social AR can um, more on the front face side of it. Okay. Camera filters, it's fun. It can engage and it is, uh, it can provide a link between your brand and the retailer, customer, between a customer and a brand or a retailer. Okay. Um, the apps that's getting popular, I think I don't want to hit the numbers, but I think majority of the population, um, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, there are a lot, but at this point of time, for this webinar, I'm just covering more on the Facebook, Instagram side of it, okay? Uh, Snapchat is good. If I have time, I'll show some examples on Snapchat. I have a few videos that I've recorded on Snapchat also, okay? And I'll tell you the fundamental difference between Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat, okay? Um, one important thing, and I'll go back to what I started, my technology, okay? Why do people, customers use AR? And this goes back to revolve around, and it is very relevant for social AR side, okay? There is a tech phase, there is a toy phase, there is a tool phase, and there's totality phase, okay? And this is what I call it as a habit when I started, okay? Um, there are a few people who have used Facebook, they use filters, but didn't notice that, oh, that is an AR, oh, I've used it. I personally, when I teach someone and I say that, oh, I, I didn't know that is called AR, okay? People didn't realize when I'm using it, okay? Second type is, I know what AR is, the Facebook filters, camera filters, but I know what it is, but I will start sharing with my friends. That's how things get viral. The third is, I need to use it and it's useful, okay? The last is, it's everywhere, it's a common place, it's a habit. So these are four different phases of uh, the customer partner, tech, toy, tool, and totality, okay? And why we are getting into this because as defined in the, uh, the first initial slice, the tech uh, as a totality, usability kind of thing, it's a habit kind of a thing. It is more relevant in social AR space than in app or web, okay? Why? Because the ease of use. App and web are still catching up, but social is picked up big time with regards to the AR side of it. Okay, and that's why 
more than three and four already started uh, using AR for not only for fun, but also for some kind of engagement with the product or the brand that they are interested in. And I think I saw some messages on Ikea and all those uh, fashion uh, brands that is already heavily utilizing this social space. Okay. And important part, I just grabbed it from uh, uh, Snap Report Light is like, a lot of people are sharing um, uh, AR photos and videos without even noticing that it is part of AR, okay? And and it is a very big jump that's going to happen in the social AR space. And 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 that and that is the reason why people are moving into this technology space, okay? This particular tech space of AR into the social media side, okay? And why it is important because if I'm a digital marketing person, apart from learning the typical SEOs, SEMs, and all those things, this space also matters a lot. So, and I always tell people like, you think AR is an enabler for your solution, reaching your customer. It is not going to replace anything. It is just an enabler. And that is very relevant on this particular side. And two, two names I always like, okay? Uh, two, two important points, at least in social AR I like is, URL is int enough, okay? That means people um, go to a browser, just type in and say, okay, uh, uh, how it look, um, I can type in uh, lasa.com, lasa.com or Shopify, my own uh, uh, business page, okay? But apart from it, what people love to do it in real life, we call it as IRL, okay? I want to see how does it look in me before I go purchase it, okay? I want to buy a Ray-Ban glass or I want to, uh, or my wife wants to have, uh, see how the lipstick she, uh, before she buys, okay? So that's the reason IRL is very important, okay? And second is social becomes a new search engine. People search for a lot more products that they interested because of the new gen, uh, the new current generation that they are getting across. Okay? And another important trend that is happening right now is apart from the social become the new search engine, the big trend that is right now is happening is e-commerce getting into the social side of it. Okay. Facebook has this new tag word. Okay. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, they call it as uh, see it. Uh, try it, buy it, okay, without exiting that platform, okay. That's the importance of what social e-commerce and uh, that's coming up, and that's where heavy lot of money is put on from by Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook, okay. And the combination of three things: can I see a product? Can I try a product? Can I buy a product? Everything inside your social media platform. Is, is the most important part that you should be aware of, okay? And uh, an example that I showed across, okay? Buy a Ray-Ban glass, try a Ray-Ban glass, and can I check out a Ray-Ban glass inside the space? That means my time to uh, uh, forget about a web browser and forget about um, app-based, okay? An advantage this guys have over web and app is when I try something, I not only will like what I have, I will try to share what I look like to my friends. It's viral. That means somebody is recommending your product internally without sharing across. And that is an important statistic that Sophia has that the web and the app doesn't have. And, and, and what this Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat is trying to tap on that, okay? Even if you don't buy it, when you start sharing people, how does my brand or product looks like? Things will evolve rapidly. Okay. The first thing is the filters. Obviously, this is Facebook and Instagram. There are a lot of filters available. Okay. Within that uh, space. Okay. Filters in a layman terms is basically um, things like it's a camera filter. You can also do a back face uh, solution, back face camera solution also. So it is like basically an overlay on top of your face and it creates an animated uh, GIFs, animated uh, images, animated text. You can come up with a quiz that you will try to play around the end and you can try on multiple things. So these are some things very interesting that you can actually do within the filters, okay? The filters can be as complex as uh, you can even augment a market-based AR in Spark, basically in Facebook or Instagram. So these are things that can be done within the filters. Um, you can have an animated poster, you can have a face mask, you can do makeup uh, try-ons. Uh, you, it, 
one of the things that facebook and instagram can do is you can't do hand or like thing but apart from it you can do head gestures you can do smile you can do blink you can so these are different things that we can do um, you can do eye colors uh, face distortion hair colors so these are things that or solutions that can be done within the social ai space okay specifically to facebook and instagram okay if you want to remove uh, your background and you want to have your own background uh, when people see the filter you can do it okay uh, can you uh, apply some kind of a sepia tone filter to your whole face or your uh, look to it you can do it okay so these are things that uh, uh, you can actually do within your facebook uh, and instagram filter okay and big chunk is going on to this guy it's called the makeup a lot of brands um, uh, sephora and all those uh, things have been trying to tap onto this uh, uh, social uh, ar filter space okay and um, uh, how to use this filter i'll come back to this okay um, so what happens is when uh, when we always talk about this marketing funnel okay and we know there are a lot of things that we can do with social ai okay but how brands are utilizing this uh, filters can be broadly divided into this in this marketing funnel okay there is this awareness there is interest there is consideration there is intent there is evaluation there is purchase okay so when you start creating filters i show some examples later but filters like ar games like eating filter that means you are you are trying to eat healthy food kind of a thing or you are trying to answer a quiz game or and that that makes it engagement and that's fun okay that's when you start to generate interest with the customer tends to aware of what the product is all about and what the filter does or what the brand does okay it's more of an interest okay it's more of awareness okay when does it go into consideration or intent is when i start doing try ons that means i want to buy a ray-ban glass or i want to buy a nice nike shoe okay can i know that means i'm intending to buy it but i want to try it before i can uh, go and purchase it can i do this in app can i do this in web yes no question about it but the differentiation factor is when i do my try on or when i explore my product my first thing is i can start sharing it to others and that's important and that's what people do these days okay the last is evaluation and purchase and this is where you get to the paid side of marketing that means can i create my own campaign can i create my own facebook ar ads that means facebook not only can do ads but also can do ar ads specifically to your what you want to concentrate on which kind of users which age group which country you want to look for and you can release the filter and it's a paid one specifically for that so the intent for it they did to purchase the particular product okay and that's like a typical uh, marketing funnel okay um uh, so the the important things how do you start um, getting sharing the filters across okay uh, one is basically through your own channels um, social media profiles mail chain you can create as a nice poster and share it across as a qr code and people can uh, route it across you will you see in the last uh, example that i show across okay um, then second is uh, earned channels basically you can use influencers you can use some press you can use some partnerships and ask them to promote your filter across because there will be x number of filters in your facebook okay and it is difficult for people to find your filter okay so the question is yes my solutions are good but how do you people find the filters Okay, we are not uh, Nike or we are not Panasonic to figure out who are brands or who will follow brands. But as an individual, how do people follow across? Okay, but in case if you're a small business owner, the opportunity, the way we can promote is either you, through your own channels, through influencers, through promotions, through partnerships, or go for a paid campaign so that we get bumped up above and so that you can reach your target audience. Okay. And uh, why do people use PR filters? it's because of impact okay and it reach uh, millions of people so that it can create fun and shareable content it's very important um, not many people know that uh, many people have looked at that and that they become like oh wow that looks good and i also start trying and that that's how the viral campaign works across um engagement um, because you can uh, engage with the outside world 
uh, and it reacts to it. And last is fun because a lot of games nowadays uh, have been uh, social AR uh, been created using the social AR platform so that it's small and it's viral also. Okay, um, let me share some uh, before I share some examples. The question people ask: Okay, okay, understand what social AR is. Understand what it can do. I'm I'm a Facebook person, but I want to start developing it. Okay, for social AR, people don't use Unity. Okay, um, there are two fundamental platforms people use. Uh, one is Spark AR. Um, Spark AR is basically the uh, the only software. I'll say the only software um, that can develop filters for Facebook and Instagram platform. Okay, um, so very uh, non-programming. It's slightly techy when you want to do advanced stuff, but otherwise it'll be faster to use. Okay, um, there is no limitations. You can uh, develop for PC or a MacBook. Okay, and one project you can decide. You want the filter to be posted in uh, uh, Facebook or Instagram or just only one also. Okay, um, that's the advantage Spark AR has. Okay, um, with regards to uh, how uh, we share filters basically. Uh, basically, once um, we create a filter in Spark AR platform, we publish it. Uh, it actually gives you a link and it also gives you a QR code. Okay. Um, the QR code allows you to share your link to uh, others so people can test it out. Okay. And uh, an important part is Spark AR, when you start, you should uh, log into your business domain. Uh, it means every, assuming you have a business and you have a Facebook account, you log in. That means when I publish that filter, it knows it is publishing to that particular Facebook account. Okay, and that is the best way to, uh, first thing is to publish it in your own uh, channel now. So that means when you open SPA RPR, enter your credentials, then start working on the project and you hit publish, it gets published in your thing, okay? Um, it takes a roughly around one day to five days for the approval process for the lens of the filters to come alive. Once it's alive, then people can start uh, sharing to others now. Okay. And a lot of things can be done with uh, uh, Spark AR. Apart from uh, understanding how to publish it, okay, one of the best things that Spark AR does is analytics. Okay. End of the day, what's my return of investment? What do I get from this one? Okay. Keeping the PDP in mind, Facebook doesn't collect any of the data other than these four things. They collect impressions. What is the post contain the effect? Okay. Uh, how many people have opened it? Okay. Uh, uh, and second is number of four pictures or photos taken with your filters. Okay. And number of saves, the number of people who are favorite this one. Apart from this, you can also know which country this, from which country this uh, people are coming from, typical one, the age group, okay? So these are the ways kind of data that gets analyzed and you can track on the dashboard level, okay? That means you wanna go slightly global or you wanna go slightly Asia Pacific, you should be able to start understanding whether your filter is worked or not, okay? Whether the filter that you work for the brand works also. So this is kind of very important with regards to the Spark AI side of it, okay? So before I go into the next one, let me show some few examples that just for the prototype side I've done. Um, one is um, uh, an exhibit booth. You always want to push our limits of, uh, of solutions. And I say that, okay, we can create an exhibit booth using app. We can also using web, but can I also uh, do an exhibit booth using uh, web-based uh, social AI, okay? That means you tap on the filter, it augments because I don't want to go to the typical way of um, uh, beauty filters kind of thing. It's already already available. I would just want to show the intermediate to advanced level things that we can do within the social AR. Okay. So the first example was um, exhibit booth where you are able to uh, uh, tap the filter and you can actually see uh, your exhibit booth. You can use your phone to walk inside. Okay, that means you are able to see the entire booth within the same space itself. Okay. The second is um, uh, the food. Assuming you have a 3D model of a food. Okay. Assuming you go to a one Italian restaurant and uh, yes, you can use marker based AR to do it. But apart from marker based AR, you can also tap onto the lens or the filters that is given by the uh, restaurant and you're able to augment that food also. 
So these are a few things that you can um, actually do. Exhibit both is one. Um, second is the food uh, can be uh, uh, augmented at the same time can be shared to others. A uh, couple of more examples. Um, the first one, something I did in the morning. Uh, this one uh, was using uh, Snapchat just to show the difference of uh, Snapchat and Facebook kind of a thing. Um, this is more towards like a 3D filter where you have glasses and you can also customize your glass. Okay, so I just want to make it kind of very interesting to see how much you can push your limits of uh, social AR. So it's not that just I can just have a nice beauty AR filter and that's pretty much it. You can also configure it. Okay, so the example this one is um, is basically your uh, you have lens, your frame. You can adjust your color of your lens. You can adjust your color of your frame and you're able to do it. So these are the two things that you can actually do. And if you are happy, then hit share and you can share it to others. Okay. This was uh, one uh, uh, configuration we can actually do. Um, the second, uh, again, this category comes under what we call as try-on categories. Try-on means you are able to see how a particular product looks before you start buying it. Okay. Um, the second one that's specific to Snapchat, um, um, uh, more on the filter side of it, but more specific to Snapchat kind of the thing is uh, try on uh, for shoes. Um, so basically, uh, assuming that I want to buy a shoe, um, I, I know you can buy a, make an expensive app based uh, solution on try ons, but I just want to make it something quick, faster, so people can see how it looks. Um, so basically, uh, you are. Uh, uh, shoe fits your leg you can move your legs and your shoe will be able to move accordingly so that's one advantage that you can obviously have it um, so you, before you buy you can actually see how my uh, shoe looks like um, design looks like and if you're happy you can also customize multiple shoes also you can have three four shoes and each shoe can be different design and each design you can actually um, showcase across now so this is basically what we call it as uh, uh, try ons okay so the two exam the two the four types of examples exhibit booth um, you can do something on the food ar um, obviously you can do beauty filters also um, apart from this you can also do uh, try ons for glasses try ons for shoes these are the two uh, four different examples that i want to showcase now. okay um, See, uh, for Facebook, there are try-ons for classes you can do. Um, one thing that I can tell you the difference um, between web app and uh, social, okay? Just, just quick, uh, I think I need this one. Okay, this is very important in case if you want to take, uh, um, I think I missed this line. If you want to take this, um, uh, kind of a summarize everything into one single uh, uh, table. So when it comes to uh, um, app-based, web-based, and social, okay, the first row, if you see, is is it downloadable? Apps are downloadable. Web cannot do not, doesn't have to download. Social doesn't have to download. Period. Okay. The second is accuracy. Okay, the level of solution accuracy in app is very high. Okay, that means apps are supposed to be very stable. You, you can try, rate, uh, rate it eight to or nine out of 10 now, okay? Uh, web, yes, internet is an issue, but I think they are not that accurate as um, uh, app-based. It needs some time, okay? The third is social. It's kind of very accurate um, because um, it, solutions are not very intense. It's a very viral solution with the creating. So it is more or less it's accurate, okay? Content details, that means what content am I showing it on the platform? Whether it's going to be a, a high level content, very realistic, okay? Or it's an average content and all the things. The web and social should have to be average. It cannot document very high level content. That means I have this very big uh, sofa and it is very realistic, okay? Easier to do an app based rather than doing a, uh, a web or a social based, okay? Um, the slam compatibility is basically your markerless AR. Can I augment an information um, uh, onto the surface? Uh, yes. Okay. More or less yes for all. Okay. Uh, face tracking. Um, the face tracking for app and social, 100% yes. It can track faces. It can apply filters. Okay. 
web is there it's still catching up it's not up to the game as of now okay so if you are into the programming side of it or you are trying to get into programming side the sixth point customization is the most important thing okay app based can we can do very high level customization because i had a question about ai and all those things okay with app based i can bring in my ml component right inside it i can bring my ai component inside it so it becomes much more interesting okay um and there is no third party that i can integrate with that's something that uh, social ar has okay that means android and web has high level of customization um, and you can think third party sdks but for social it's a very low level uh, customization but where it comes the big picture and why i want to target this is um, the question that i asked is like try ons okay any try on that you do okay if you look at my file size the actual output file size of your filter cannot be more than 4 mb not gb yeah 4 mb that means your images your menu everything has to be compressed and make sure when i publish that your filter will be uploaded only if it is only 4 mb okay so that is the challenge that spark ai has that means you need to have a really good artist who can make that try on in that particular space okay if you have it then very well you can do it okay whereas snapchat has increased from 4 mb to 8 mb okay and for that reason a lot of people are actually doing try ons like shoes using snapchat okay as of now facebook and instagram doesn't have um, like uh, tracking for right now it's only face uh, that's pretty much it but if you look at lens studio it can do uh, like it can do hands okay um, and the question that was asked it can do multiplayer okay Uh, it's still in beta version uh, it can do connected lenses that means i can bring multiple people inside that one lens okay the last is internet required uh, only required for downloading apps required at all times and required at all times okay so this is basically a big gist of what is the criteria for choosing an ai platform whether it's going to be app whether it's going to be web or whether it's going to be social media so it's a quick summary of what have we covered so far okay so i'll go back to what i started um the last section before i show up the one of the things that we want to do uh is a example of try on glasses a marker or markerless uh, i'll call it as a face ar it tracks your face okay um uh, okay so now the most important thing what's my kpi roi and ar because end of the day i want to have a marketing budget i asked my boss boss give me 100000 dollars or give me 5000 dollars end of the day what will i get after finishing this this kpis roi and ar um the this marketing funnel is very interesting because um uh, we used to this is a typical marketing funnel we used to have we have a marketing campaign we have a then we have sales and we reach the customers a typical way we do it okay um but things are changing right now because whether i do which one application i do whether i do app social or uh, uh, web based okay you need to figure out how to attract that audience how do you engage the audience and second thing the last thing is the line you should be satisfied is satisfied with what you is uh, seeing right now okay and that's where the 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 whole uh, funnel is going across okay um, attract engage and delight okay and it can be a, a prospective customer or it can be a guy who just sees it and say okay let me also try it it can be a customer who is ready to buy that particular product okay so these are things that you should keep in mind when you start getting the marketing of a particular uh, product okay and very important thing and i'll always tell okay and i go back to what i started it's a tech phase okay ar is not a marketing mass marketing tool like radios tvs or magazine ads okay ar is something a person must choose to engage okay meaning i can put a poster and say it's a very nice poster you put a small ar icon a person can look at it and he can walk away okay the decision of him to use or her to use that ar is up to him it's it's her choice okay or it's his choice okay and and so the question comes is if the choice is given to the customer then how do you make sure that the person uses the ar how do you make 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 sure that he engages that particular 
um, um, marketing campaign that you put across. Okay, uh, so it is not about creating marketing headlines and very big posters and say, "Man, I've done it now. How do I make sure that the person works?" Okay, so it's a different, and that's why the you have to pull, make sure that the customer likes. the call that is making or the call that you're trying to make in the poster and then he's trying to use the ai okay and the most important thing people miss in these days is what's the business objective what's the central objective of ai development before you hit the kpi this is very important what is the business objective i want to sell my sofa or i want to make sure that i create my own filter or i want to create my product configurator for my website what's the business objective they are trying to create okay and i just summarize in a very layman terms i want to do augmented reality show my products before selling them physically or i want to sell for a polo shirts with ar and thus having a new way of working or i want to create an ar map to guide my customers to my store all these are possible okay so when you want to understand your kpi or when you want to understand your roi go back to your basics 101 what's your objective okay and ask this another big very big question people don't ask is like why do you need ar can't i do this in my mobile phone is the question that you have to ask okay so this is very important with regards to the business objective okay third who are your users when you want to track something you want to understand who are you tracking for who is going to use this technology whether it is millennials whether it is uh, people who are uh older whether people who are business person who are the or it is targeted only for females who are the users that is for this particular the ar is for okay and again you can come up with your own uh, ux uh, uh study and say that okay these are my um your targeted audience that i am looking for okay whether it's going to be for adult kids whether it is going to be for young people or whether it's going to be of people working in a specific industry Who uses a smartphone twenty four hours a day within the time? Okay, so we have business objective, we have users, and the last thing before you start tracking your KPI is what is this AR for? Okay, when you see brands create getting into social AR, they think it as fun. Some people use as a filter, some AR filter as a fun element. Some people use it as a business value. ask yourself when i create my experience whether it's going to be a fun feature or a business value because when a customer comes into that particular channel he it does it only once he likes it he will repeat it if the cup the if the customer doesn't like it he will move on to other filters okay and have a strategy to communicate with the ar content okay so how do we generate track um this is more on the analytic side of it um so that i can just summarize and give it to you based on our uh, uh, experience okay the first is we can always track the number of scans number of app downloads that means what kind of data that can can collect at the back end i can always collect how many people have scanned that marker or i can go to the app store and see how many people have downloaded the apps okay um so you have to set a clear realistic goal by saying that boss i am in this event i am doing a marker based ar solution i need to have at least 100000 scan that marker that's your uh, objective okay keep that objective and say that and go after finishing the events and say how many people have scanned it okay whether they have engaged or not is not thing it's a different thing but at least you know that your uh, uh, target and how much you achieve you are able to track because ar can help you get that kind of data on the back end scans downloads okay second engage engagement time this is market scan that means i have scanned the market but can i know how much time i spend on understanding whether i utilize how much time i have inside the ar space can i track that yes you can track that also so apart from downloads apart from scanning you can also say for well, my uh, experience of my furniture is uh roughly around 30 seconds to 60 seconds okay a person opens the app scans it and i augment this furniture okay how long will the person is inside that experience can be tracked yes it can be tracked so another important thing okay 
and as i'm tracking that i'm also able to track because you're assuming i'm doing a web page here i'm also tracking whether i'm inside the web page i'm scrolling through information and i'm adding it to the cart all these things can be tracked across that's why the engagement time can be tracked from the ar level also to the web level and uh, the third is augmented reality boosted via social media okay irrespective whether i do app web or social can you figure out a way to boost via social media okay either i can do influencer either i do a ad campaign that means let's have a budget for ad campaign pr ads okay i'm going to uh, have 5000 dollars allocated for it okay so when i spend 5000 dollars allocated to it and i publish the filter across how many people have opened the filter how many people have shared the filter and how many people have shared the filter and moved to the next stage of buy that particular product can also be tracked see so these are the ways people have started tracking at the end of the day it is not just experience we are also able to collect data at the back okay these are things that we can always do the last couple of slides before i open up to any questions and i'll show open up the uh, the demo on that ntc wants to show what is holding ar from becoming mainstream okay let's accept the fact that it is still not as a mass product as your smartphone but it's still not mass mainstream at but it is in the direction of going mainstream two things cost um some people don't want to invest in a costly technology but that's where we as at least personally i we start educating people on the different solutions you go for an application which might cost you $50000 to make okay and sometimes web will cost you $20000 to make okay but at the end of the day we always go back and ask what is the thing that you want to achieve let me help you with a solution okay but if you put on a layman terms and say boss i don't have $50000 in my pocket because it's covid times and i don't have the budget for that one so one is cost second is content who is going to develop the content i have i'm a furniture industry i've got uh, 60 queues 600 queues queues how will i model it so these are things that people think okay there are solutions okay but when people come to us or come to me personally for learning or anything else people come to me and say what what are we trying to do and that's where uh, the content is key there are now solutions available for creating content okay fast content but hindsight people say was who's going to develop my content it's going to cost me a lot of money because i've got a lot of queues third and the most important thing that we as as developers we always want to do is educate until unless like how i'm doing the webinar unless people doesn't know people see examples they understand ha ah, i think i know how to do this one i think i like this one. I, i don't think so i don't like it so these are the answers that you get when you start start showing some demos so when we do client calls or when we go do webinars we do workshops we try to show more examples theoretical is important but when people see visually they'll say oh i think i can relate to my industry education is important experience okay what is the experience that a person has when i do markerless because i see a lot of questions because i'm still confused with marker based marker because it takes time it's a new technology okay but sometimes the social ai picks up so fast that oh this is very easy i open facebook i tap it documents very simple so this is an example where uh, we see the mainstream is not there okay uh, the final slide the playbook of ar is um, make sure that visually it is experience is memorable presentable okay the chair should look like a chair okay when i say like real estate okay the difference even though we are developing solutions in game engines the the content that we are trying to create is has to be very different it, the product should look like an actual product that is buying from the store um, connect with the audience emotional okay and that is very important when when there is a uh, uh, when you start creating your ar solutions last is make it personal and that's where social ar is picking up big speed on creating a personal connection okay um so these are what i want to share uh, uh before i share the demos uh, that you can try on is a small ar quiz using facebook um final thoughts from my side um there are few things that we at least my experience is there are few business person that i felt that they are traditional they, they didn't want to get technology inside the space i respect that i'm fine with it okay but i also understand that 
the generation that we are moving on is a, is a is a millionaire generation they always have smartphones that has they always are engaging either through different channel whatsapp snapchat facebook instagram anything okay the customers are engagement okay the question comes is you have this customer that is more slightly getting more tech savvy i have this business can i start adapting okay sometimes you will lose it but it's okay when you start losing it you, you will understand the what maybe technology is evolving okay so uh, be prepared for to weather the war but end of end of the goal the uh, the rewards can be great okay um saying that um uh and if you want to see or if you want to know more about courses um uh, you can scan the qr code from npuc that is shared to us so you can um, take a scan and see the courses that is available in npuc learning hub okay uh um, but before before we sign off and before i start taking more questions um uh, i have designed a small ai filter uh, just for the sake of fun it's an ai quiz filter um it's no it's boring i don't say it's boring it's basically it's a quiz filter based on about ai okay um so if you can um uh, open your mobile phone um, um it will be nice to uh, engage and i will start answering some questions um open your mobile phone uh if you have a facebook account um or an instagram um just scan one of the qr codes okay and uh, basically what happens is um the ai filter will open in your phone uh it's been hosted by ntuc okay and uh, make sure it's front facing um and then follow the instructions okay um that the filter that i'm sharing to you is uh, based on head gestures uh basically you lean left it is true you lean right it is false okay uh, there is a set of 10 questions um so basically what we are trying to do is we are just to give a more example of how social ai works and you can push it across it's like a did you know filter like it's not something you created from a lot of people have uh, used this filter so i'll just give you 5 10 minutes to play with the filters and i can start understanding more questions okay uh and i'll take questions in case if you have any questions feel free to ch chip in if not feel free to try the ai quiz filter uh, it's hosted on npuc's instagram page and a facebook page uh, once you scan the filter the instructions are there flip your phone make sure your camera is facing you and uh, you will see a title uh, ar for enterprise kind of a thing and then after 5 seconds the instructions follow the filter is based on head uh, gestures left and right okay, okay i'm going to ask uh, answer some questions if case in case if you have uh, if not please do test the filters in depth courses pertaining to ar Uh, it depends on how much you foundation knowledge you have done. so uh for manish uh, in depth is basically uh, uh the way you can think about this uh, if you want to go to a unity journey then always start with programming fundamentals um, then you can go into uh uh figuring out how marker based ar works markerless ar works um then understand how web based ar works then the social ar okay um if you understand all these four then it, it all of programming related yes uh spark is what we use spark here yeah. you 
Thank you. Any can recognition incorporated on the app QR code in facial scan to the QR? I don't know whether you need both facial and QR. Thank you. I'm just typing some answers. Uh, if you have any questions, just drop it in the Q&A side. Um, I can drop it. Has to be... Yes, customization. Nisha, and do anything. I think that uh, the app-based agency should provide all, but my personal uh, thing is at least you should give a heads up on the UX from your side. Uh, but if you still want the uh, agency to do copywriting and storytelling, um, you can. Um, just drop my LinkedIn profile. Um, what is the average time to develop the solutions for that area? Any more questions? Uh, if you're a marketer, do not venture into Unity 3D. I, 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 I might, um, um, I may not advise you on that one. Um, now one of the things that we are actually working on is uh, creating a tech stack for digital marketing people. Um, so one of the things that we are trying to do is two areas that we found to be interesting. One is uh, AR, more towards the social AR side. Um, second is data analytics uh, for marketing. Okay, that's more towards Tableau. Okay, so these are the two tech stack I would say uh, that our digital marketing people should know. So you can call it as uh, applied social media using uh, data analytics and AI. If you can combine this, it will be very interesting if you're a marketing person. That will give you a, a very high end uh, because um, you need to differentiate from other marketing people. So these are my two suggestions. Um, uh, data analytics um, for social media and um, social media. Uh, see, web-based AR, it all based on what you are trying to do Okay, um, for the cost. Okay. Um, it depends on whether you are trying to showcase a garment or whether you want to do like a try-on kind of a thing. Try-ons are slightly expensive in web-based AR. Uh, you rather fit try-ons using social AR faster. But if you want to show just garments, I think you can do it in 30 to 50 K now. Thanks. Thank 
you. Uh, so marker is basically you are uh, seeing a um, uh, predefined image and you're documenting the information. So the predefined images are something that you will drop it before you develop them. Markerless is you don't need any predefined information. You just drop it right inside it on your surface that you see from the camera. Thanks. How much cost to do the efforts? It, it, it's not going to be costly. If you, if you want to learn by, uh, you can do it at a week's time. Now. If you go for any agencies, uh, if you, I think you can do it less than $500. It's not going to be, um, uh, I'll say, um, it's not going to be expensive like app based. This is for size that less than $500. You should be able to do it. And uh, to be frank, if you spend a month's time, you should be able to do it by yourself also. Oh, uh, that I have to ask uh, something that you ask um, NTUC reps. Uh, QR code isn't available right now. Should be there. They can check. You can check is the Facebook or Instagram. It should be there. The QR code. check my phone.
No, uh, can the view, the quiz results be viewed for each user if yes, it is viewed from Spark? Uh, you can't view because I think that's where uh, the Facebook comes across. Okay, there are two, I'll ask you drawback, but that's how Facebook con controls the data. Okay, um, you can, uh, you, you cannot uh, view the results per se, but there, you, can, you, you can finish the results, share it to others. That's one. Um, but apart from it, we can know how many people have opened it, how many people have uh, used the full uh, filter. That's how we can do it, uh, not the results per se. Okay. Uh, one another drawback you can also say in social AR is you cannot do a call to action from Facebook to a website. Uh, Uh, so Facebook to website, because I, I got a lot of queries from marketing people saying that, okay, I, I, I like this filter. Can a person tap and can it go to a website? Okay. Uh, not on a free level, you can't do it. Uh, but if you do on a campaign level in Facebook, you can do it. Okay. So just keep this in mind in case if you're a marketing person and you are trying to gather data, you can't get a personalized data for sure. But uh, one other thing that you also keep in mind is, I do a filter and I want to go for a campaign. I say I tap and I want to go across to the uh, website. You cannot do it on a free filter. You have to do it on a campaign level. Okay, that's the only way you can call to action from a filter to the website that you want to come. Um, I can talk to the guys from the skills feature team, let you know. Yeah. And 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 uh, do keep a tap on the new iPad versions if anybody is interested in the AR side of it because a lot of uh, uh, interesting stuff uh, that's coming up in the AR. Uh, AR. Um, Yes, only for social media. But apart from it, uh, web and um, uh, app base can track a lot of uh, information. Analytics is big in web and AR. You can customize it. I think it's more of a security feature that uh, that Facebook has that limits the, the data that it can reach.
think I, I can wait. Uh, that's over. If you have any questions, I can answer any questions. I'm just replying to all the questions, but in case if you have any questions, do drop me a, a message. I can help you out. Um, for Regina, when will this AI be implemented? It's already implemented. The question is how do you want to use it? People are already using it. So there are softwares available to implement the solutions. I have to check on the quiz. Let me check. Uh, it's nothing to do with overseas. Uh, we have not made it. Uh, Region, yeah, it's very global. <clears throat> Check.
Prajesh. Yes. Question here. Yes, just want to check whether you have any other questions that you'd like to take on. No, I think I have answered all the questions. Uh, I was waiting for her. But I think I've tried, I've answered all the questions. Should be fine. Okay, so uh, shall we wrap it up? Yep. Okay. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, before the session ends, please scan the QR code and provide your feedback and comments in the webinar. And lastly, I would like to share with you about our skills and training advisory service. If you're not sure how to get started on your upskilling journey, you can sign up for our free one-to-one -one skills and training advisory session, where a skills ambassador will guide you in understanding your career goals and provide suitable course recommendations. Simply scan on the QR code and indicate SFMX Smart Nation in the mandatory field, how do you hear about us at the bottom of the registration form? Our skills ambassadors will contact you within two to three working days. We have come to the end of the webinar and we thank you for joining us. Hope you have gained important insights from our speaker. Thank you and hope to see you in our other sessions.